Good evening, everyone. This is the retake of the sermon for Sunday, November 15th. The sermon title is, It is Our Turn. The Old Testament book of Judges describes a period in early Israelite history that includes a reoccurring pattern where the Israelites do what is evil in the sight of the Lord followed by periods of oppression by the Canaanites, the Philistines, and other powerful natures, neighbors, with the eventual return of the people to God when they came to him begging for relief from whatever is oppressing them. In our Old Testament lesson this morning, God helps the Israelites to recover from the, from the oppression by the Canaanites by gifting Deborah with wisdom, intelligence, and leadership ability, which she uses to bring about relief from the oppression of, the, of King Jabin of Canaan. Deborah serves as a leader for the early Israelite community at a time when women didn't have a voice in Israelite society or any other society in those days. The Old Testament text describes her as a judge, but she's not a judge as we think of them. She was an outstanding leader that the people trusted, who dispensed judgment for the Israelites under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. Deborah used her talents of wisdom and intelligence bestowed on her by God to bring these wayward people back to him. Like Deborah, we all have gifts, skills, and experiences that give us the ability to do things well. Some are gifted with musical talent, others with the ability to speak in public. Still others have been gifted with the ability to lead. Some of us are good at numbers. Others are good teachers, and some have been gifted with the ability to see the physical properties of our world and use those properties in different ways to make life better for all of us. All of these talents are gifts from God bestowed on his people to make life better for everyone in our world. Now our gospel reading this morning is about talents also. Jesus starts this unusual parable by saying, it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. The beginning of the parable seems very much like other parables presented in Matthew. We can see God as the man, especially a wealthy man, as he is bestowing talents and almost indescribable value for everyday people in the first century. The man entrusts eight talents to three slaves, five to the most capable, two to the next, and only one talent to the least capable of the three slaves. So the man, like God, knows his slaves and what they are capable of doing with the talents they have been given. The first two trade their talents and double the value of the resources they have been charged with managing. The third, however, because he is afraid of his master, buries his talents because he doesn't want to lose them or the property that was entrusted to him. Now, when the man returns from his journey, he calls each of the slaves to account for the talents he had left in their care. This is where I begin to struggle with the parable. The man praises the first two slaves for their use of his talents to get them even to get him even more talents. So the rich get richer without concern for how the talents have been multiplied. And the master has high praise for those two slaves without giving any thought to their methods. 
The, slur, the third slave calls the man out. He explains that he hid the talent because he knew his master was a harsh man, reaping where he did not sow and gathering where he did not scatter seed. Here is where I begin to wonder who Jesus is patterning the man after. The God that Jesus teaches us about throughout the Gospels knows his people, gifts them with the talents necessary to accomplish his purposes, and graciously forgives them when things don't work out. This seems out of character for our gracious God, especially when the man seems to agree with the third slave assessment of him. Now the next part of the parable would probably raise some eyebrows among the crowd to whom Jesus is speaking. The man belittles the third slave for not putting his talents in the bank, where they might have earned interest. The word bank is only found here in verse 27, and in Luke's account of this parable, in chapter 19, verse 23. Banks were not an institution like a bank that we, as we see them today. And they were mostly for the exchange of money between different societies that didn't share common um, values or languages. And the charging of interest is against Jewish law. So the earned interest would have been considered unclean gain. God would not be party to any unclean gain. And finally, the punishment for the unproductive slave seems harsh and inappropriate for his failure to advance the wealth of the man who has given him talents according to his ability. So what's Jesus talking about here in this unusual parable? The answer to that question and the key to the parable of the talents is in verse 29. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for the, from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. I believe all who follow Jesus Christ have been given much. Those who follow him, especially his disciples, have been given a vision of what life is like in God's kingdom. I see Jesus, his life, and earthly ministry as the talents handed out by God. How Jesus' followers respond to this gift of talents will be the measure of what additional talents will be given to them. Those who use their gifts well will be given more, and those who waste these gifts will lose them. And the interest on the talents is the love of God displayed by them and others to whom the followers pass on Jesus' love throughout the world. Even today, we are given much as well. Through Jesus' life and sacrifice on the cross, all people are able to receive the gift of salvation, a gift far beyond any human measure. And when we pass Jesus' love on to others, we're using our talents well to bring about the gain for God, which is the interest on his gift of talent. There are more gifts to come, if we will only use the much that we have already been given to spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world. Those who will not acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior have little and nothing, and what little they have will be taken away when it comes time to settle accounts with God. We have been given very much. Jesus Christ came to earth to live among us, just so he could experience life as a human being. He gave his life on the cross so that anyone who believes in him and his heavenly Father can become children of God and heirs to, to the kingdom in heaven. 
even though we live in strange and uncertain times, these truths remain constant. God has gifted us with talents, just as he did Deborah under the palm tree between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. We have been given much, and we must share that much with our gifts and talents to, with the world so that others might know the gift of love that Jesus offers to everyone. The challenge for us is to pass on God's love safely so that our gifts and talents might return to him with interest, which is the love of God from all people. Amen. The pastoral prayer is as follows. Lord of mercy and justice, you have given us so many talents and gifts to be used in your world. You've given us these gifts because you trust us to use them well and stand with us as we go about the work to which you have called us. But we disappoint you when we denigrate the value of the talents or become so fearful of failure that we don't believe we're capable of helping ourselves or others in this world. Lord, forgive us. Help us to trust the gifts you've given to us and to trust your guidance as we use them. Forgive us when we're fearful, stubborn, apathetic, or indifferent to the needs of the world around us. We ask, dear God, for your strength, comfort, and guidance for those we have included in our prayer list this morning. Be with them in whatever circumstances they face, and be with us as we minister to them and others in the world. There are always prayers that can go only from our hearts directly to God's ears. Please join me in a few moments of silence. Creator God, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the path he provides for us to become part of your kingdom. Thank you for the talents you have provided in, for each of us. Help us to recognize those talents and give us hearts to use them in your service all of our days. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 